Hey everybody. Here is a Hypro model HP-P3527F3W power supply. Despite the model having 3.5 and this is actually a 300 watt power supply. And it came out of a Gateway machine which was from the Gateway E-Machines age which obviously they're still owned by the same company they're owned by Acer now. But you can obviously tell when it's an E-Machines grade or Gateway grade power supply and when it's pretty bare like this. The only sticker is this one here. Have a look at this Hypro power supply. This is from HP. This is a Hypro HP-305 7F3R. I've worked on these many times, recapped them a few times. These are pretty good power supplies. They're actually underrated 350 watt power supplies. Because they'll pull 350 watts easily. But anyways, you notice all these other certifications we have here. And we only have the UL certification on this one. And obviously the um, the numbers match because they're both high pros. And it's funny, this one, this one don't even this one has the warning sticker. This one don't even appear to have a warning sticker on it. So anyways, um, this power supply, again, I mentioned come out of a gateway, and it does not work. It only gives 5 volt standby power. After I switch the power supply for another one, the computer started to work. So obviously that, that would tell you the power supply is the culprit. So we're going to take the cover off this, off this guy and have a look inside. Cut the um, warranty sticker. And let's go ahead and take this cover off. <clears throat> now, of course, high pros, as I mentioned earlier, how I had to recap that other one. Well, I've had to recap many of those other models. High pro power supplies tend to use TPO capacitors, which are not a very good brand. They're not the worst, but they're definitely not the best in terms of reliability. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was probably a couple of bad ones in this one. Usually when I mess with these high pros, if I have to recap them, I just pretty much change out all the capacitors on the secondary side. All the um, ones that are known to fail. Screws are a little stiff in there. And I already see a bad high, um, I already see a bad capacitor. And it's a TPO. Now, as I mentioned, this power supply was getting 5 volt standby, but it wasn't powering on. So it could have possibly had something to do with the power on signal. Going back to the power supply. So let's get a look at this. And this is the first time I ever looked in this particular model of unit. As to be expected with high pros, they're built pretty well. Now here's something that kind of um, catches my eye. Notice we have a pretty large transistor there. That's the main transistor, but we have a small one next to that. That's a telltale sign of it being a two transistor style unit. Then again, I can't really say it off. But I can't really say it for sure, but. Usually, um, IC controlled power supplies, I mean, power supplies that use an IC controlled 5 volt standby rail, do not have the second transistor. Yet the 5 volt standby did work. So, what I'll be doing with this one, to see if I can get it to work, is I'll, I'll just change out that one capacitor there. It's a 10 volt, 1000 microfarad cap. Now the rest of these appear to be just fine. The thing about TPOs is usually when they're um, not bulging like that, you can just leave them. Because usually after a few years if they haven't bulged yet, they'll usually last. TPOs really are more of a hit or miss kind of capacitor. 
some fail, some last. It just depends on which one you get. But as we expected with a high pro, it's built pretty well. I mean, the fuse, you can change it out without using a soldering iron. That's something you used to see in older power supplies. It's got good size heat sinks. The secondary side heat sink is massive. You can definitely dissipate a lot of heat with that. The transformers were pretty decent. Transformer this one is not as big as what's in the other model. The capacitors are kind of on the small side. Those are 470 microfarad caps. Even a Best Tech HX 312E power supply would have 680s in it. Yet these are only 470s. But still not too bad of a power supply. So I'll be um, I'll be changing up that one capacitor and see if that fixes the problem. See if we can get it to start working again. And of course there's a fan. It's probably um, I forget exactly what brand of fan these Hypros used. Oh, Super Red. Either a Super Red or it might be an Ada. But look, but look at those blades. Get you one more look at the um, at the build quality on this thing. I have to say it's built better than the um, 300 watt Delta that's using the newer E machines. The older Delta 300 watt units in E machines are built pretty well. We're going to show you the um, outputs right quick. 20 pin. Motherboard connection, there's no 24 pin option available here. We have two SATA connectors, two Molex connectors, floppy disk connection, and your CPU connection. That's all we get with this one. So, yeah, definitely you can tell this is an E Machine's great power supply. E Machine's gateway um, great power supply. But still worth repairing. So, anyways, end the question or comments. Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.